everyone. Welcome inside the FamilyDeal.com 7 Sports Cave. I'm Justin Rose. Contrary to popular belief, Detroit sports are not canceled tonight, so the show must go on. We're going to be talking about the Lions, of course, Michigan, and Ohio State. Plenty of guests joining me throughout the half hour as well. All right, let's get started. News of the day. I mean, this is one of the worst Redskin teams we've ever seen, quite frankly. The Lions today, though, they saw how bad the Redskins were and said, hey, you know what? We can do that, too. I guess that's a new level of losing for them because there's absolutely, after today, no chance the Lions make the postseason. And now we have to talk more and more seriously about the futures of Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn as those seats are certainly heating up. The game today, mistakes that are killing the Lions, well, it falls on coaching. Yeah, the players are the ones doing it, but the coaches aren't doing enough to make sure they don't happen. The Lions missed a field goal. Of course, they fumbled later, and then the Redskins decided to take a 91-yard kick return back for a touchdown. Yeah, that's the first time anyone saw the end zone in that first half. In the second half, the Lions came out, and it looked like they were actually going to take control of this game. First drive of that second half, they marched down 75 yards. Logan Thomas gets the Jeff Driscoll pass, and it seemed like the Lions could take control from there, but that was not the case. Of course, the Redskins tie it with the field goal, so the Lions have under a minute to try to get in field goal range, but Driscoll throws his second interception of the game. That sets up the Redskins for this. Yeah, oh, ho-hum, 29-yard that's good. Let's go. Fire up, Redskins. So the Lions have one more chance with about 20 seconds to go, and Driscoll's picked off again. The Redskins celebrate just their second win of the season, while the Lions, they've now lost seven of their last eight games. Funny thing about what's going on here with Dwayne Haskins going over to the fans, they had to go back and hike the ball and take a knee. Haskins was too busy taking a selfie with fans, so Case Keenum had to take that. 19-16, the final in the nation's capital. We definitely know that there's some things that we talked about earlier in the week, you know, as we kind of mentioned that um, are just, you know, giving us issues that we got to really, uh, within each game, we got to eliminate because they're just, they're causing us a lot of issues and really putting us off track and uh, making it really difficult from that standpoint. And those are the things that we got to really just, we got to eliminate. We had a bunch of penalties and we had some penalties again today. We've talked about cleaning those up, um, didn't get that done, turned the ball over um, four times. You know, it's hard to win in this league doing that. And it uh, just comes down to not making the plays at the end of the game. And that's kind of been a common thing over these last few weeks. And, um, you know, you just got to find a way to make them. At the end of the day, um, you know, we, we, have the, we have the confidence that we're going to go make them. And we just didn't do it. Mike Sullivan from 97 won the ticket. The Mike Valenti Show joins me now. What's going on, man? How you been? Justin, what's up, dude? Good to be back. You're wearing your Honolulu blue. Look, you know, look at you. In honor that, that Lions, uh, whatever you want to call it, that we watched today, I had to wear some Lions colors, man. I feel like it, we're beating a dead horse at this point. The season's been over for a couple of weeks now. We kind of know that this uh, team is headed nowhere. But for people out there that are still holding on to something, yeah. what, what, what do you hold on to, if you anything? Hold, you hold on to hope of getting a top three pick, right? Have <laughs> a top five pick. Okay. Um, no, I mean, Justin, I, I get your point about being a dead horse, but it's a situation where I think most fans are probably convinced that this staff isn't the right staff, this regime. Um, and I don't think anyone, myself included, thought the season would go like this. I thought this was a team that was extremely undervalued preseason, mm -hmm. and I, I'm proven to be wrong on that. All these predictions preseason, Lions are going to win three games, they're going to win five games, they're going to you know, be six and ten. I thought they'd at least be an eight and eight, nine and seven type team. But my God, it's been bad. Is it because we look at it through a local lens? Is that why the, that the national pundits can say, hey, the Lions are only going to win three or four games, guys, and we're sitting here going, how can they say that? Because we're the, we're the hardest on them than anybody, right. I would say. And we, we follow them the closest. I would, I would say it is, but the other angle of that is why you always see national negativity is because, A, statistically, you're right over the years. Historically speaking, you're right. If you More times than not, if you say the Lions right. are going to be bad. Right. And, uh, and then secondly, it's, it's the easy thing to say, right? Mm -hmm. It's the easy thing for someone just to write and say the Lions are going to suck. Right. I like to get away from the easy answers here because I think that that's what we hear through all sorts of different blogs and different types of media and stuff is the easy thing. What's, what's the hard decision? Is it waiting and seeing this thing through with Matt Patricia yep. another year? Or is it 
wait to the end of the season or should we have a press conference on Monday saying, look guys, we're going in another direction the week before Thanksgiving? Well, I'd be stunned if he doesn't get the rest of the season. I, I think he's at least getting, it, getting the rest of the season. Um, in, my, in my opinion, I'll speak for myself, I've seen what I need to see. I don't think Patricia's the guy. I don't think Quinn is the guy. And I do think they should move on. Um, does it serve a purpose to fire him right now? Not really. Uh, you, they're they're going to give him the rest of the year. Now, do I think he deserves to be back? No. But do I think he pro they probably will be back no matter what? Do I think that the, this organization, the, the you know Martha Ford, is just going to say, hey, we're going to give these guys another year? If I had to bet, I would say that she will. I, I absolutely think that he will be back. They'll be able to say... Stafford was out. We knew we kind of were going to just tank from then on yep. out to try to. That'll be the excuse. But but I think it's this to me is more on Bob Quinn sure. than Matt Patricia. This roster stinks. Mm -hmm. Now granted, they're injured. They're hurt. They're not going to use that as an excuse. Neither will we. Every team has but injuries. Every team yep. has injuries. And that's why I got to sit here and ask you. That's got to be the change first before the head coach. Oh, I mean, I the new GM's yeah. going to bring in his guy most likely, but... No, and I think that Bob Quinn has escaped a lot of criticism. So that's, the fact that you say that is true. Um, I would. The only thing I'd say that is I think that both of them are kind of married in the sense of one goes, the other goes, you'd think. That's just mm -hmm. how it was when, he, when Patricia was brought here, too. Right. Uh, but I, I think you're absolutely right that Bob Quinn, from a roster, talent, uh, player development, certainly, standpoint... It's nowhere near what you want it to be. Is this the worst loss the Lions have gone through maybe in the last five years? It, as far as, like, oh, not a bad call, not one of those games. Heartbreaker, but like, yeah. Like, this, this might be the worst Lions game I've seen in the last five years. Sure. I, the word I would use is pathetic. You know, it, it, it was pathetic to lose to a team like that. An organization that's going through a ton right now that's both on and off the field that's terrible in the Redskins. Uh, a rookie quarterback who doesn't seem to, to get anything week by week, doesn't, hasn't really been seeming to get better, Dwayne Haskins, week by week. And, of course, leave it to the Lions to be that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the pill that this team needed to get right. You know what I mean? It's, it's just laughable when you think of it because we always joke about SOL, right? Mm -hmm. And what would SOL? I hate it, by the way. Would, <laughs> I hate SOL more than anything. But... How can, you, how can you argue it? How can you deny that SOL exists? But it was kind of funny thinking, now, would SOL have been the Lions going in and just blowing out Washington and keeping people maybe in the back of their head optimistic? Or would it have been losing to a pathetic team, a rookie quarterback, and an organization that's in shambles? It probably would be exactly what happened See, today. And, and here's the funny thing about SOL. I think that there's people out there that would have seen either one of those outcomes and said it was SOL. Yep. Because the team and the organization has not gotten in front of any of this by winning football games yep. and putting a valuable product on the field for its fans to squash that. Have you seen Michigan beat Ohio State in your life? Yeah, that's another one. That went to <laughs> once in the past 15 years, right? Well, coming up right after the break, Mike Sullivan is going to give us his hot takes on whether or not the Wolverines can pull off an upset. That's coming up in just a little bit. Meanwhile, Philip Zadina in the lineup for the Red Wings tonight. He's been lighting up Grand Rapids and the AHL, so the Red Wings gave him a shot tonight against Carolina. He had three shots in 15 minutes of ice time, but of course the young kid not the savior this season. Carolina's been playing lights out as of late. Sebastian Aho with the first goal. They get an empty netter as well. 2-0 the final from Little Caesars Arena. You know, it's frustrating, it's difficult, uh, but you have to find a way uh, mentally uh, to come here every single day in a positive, uh, positive mind frame. Um, you know, just, you know, find a way to, you know, be eager to get on the ice and to, uh, you know, want to improve. All right, coming up next, we got to talk about the game. Michigan hosting Ohio State. What's it all mean? That's coming up next on thefamilydeal.com. Seven sports game. Welcome back to thefamilydeal.com. Seven Sports Cave. Time to talk about the game, though. Look, Michigan has looked very impressive over the past couple of weeks, doing some things offensively. The defense has been playing so much better. I mean, they're a different team than they were, Mike. What? the first six games of the season? Yeah, no, that's fair to say. I think a lot of people are going to look at that second half against Penn State, right, and say that's when the season kind of started to get right. Now, was it too late in some people's eyes? Maybe, but, but this team is certainly playing better as a whole 
than, I mean, not even close. Think about the Wisconsin game. Remember oh. that earlier this season, how pathetic that was? This team right now is at least playing a lot more competitive football. They're playing, Michigan's playing good football. And what my, one of my biggest criticisms of Harbaugh over the years has been that generally speaking, his teams don't get better as the years goes on. As the year goes on, I should say. This year, if you're going to pull a positive and, and be optimistic about it, certainly, you can say without really much debate, I think, that this Michigan team has gotten better as the years gone on. I would also say that Michigan teams historically under Harbaugh have peaked too early. That was his big knock the past few years. I mean, going to Iowa a couple of years ago and losing that game when they shouldn't have done that, losing yeah. last year, late three games of the last four a couple of years ago. I mean, losing late has been their thing. Winning late has not been a, a pedigree that he's built. Sure. Winning this game next Saturday, while it would not put them in the Big Ten title game, Ohio State's already going regardless right. of what happens. While it would not get them in the college football playoff, obviously that's a far-off discussion, and it likely won't even get them to a New Year's Six Bowl the with everything Bowl, else right. going out. How do you, as Michigan fan, mm -hmm. yes, you want to beat Ohio State. I'm not sitting here and downplaying how much a win would mean, but eh, consolation prize at well, best? It's, it's the only saving grace of the season, I think. It's to get the monkey off the back of Harbaugh not beating Ohio State, that needs to happen. This is, as you mentioned, all jokes aside, this is the game. This is the rivalry game. Now, of course, we're not going to go as far to say if you know if if the Michigan only wins this game every year and they go one and eleven. Right. This is what we're yeah. not. No, no one's no, no one's, one's is doing saying that. that. No one's doing that. But I think that if from a from a rational Michigan fan perspective, if they go out and beat Ohio State, you could at least kind of stomach the season you could say hey this this season I can say is a, is a success they beat Notre Dame they beat Michigan State they beat Ohio State they seemed to get better as the year went on sure it was bad mm -hmm. at first but I, I think with the exception of Michigan beating Ohio, Ohio State the season's a failure I'm not one of those people who think that there's only one champion right so there's only one team that's going to win the national title at the end of the year that's the only team that had a good season i don't believe that i, I don't subscribe there's other to goals that, that michigan's not accomplishing either though. there are going to indianapolis winning the big Ten. sure and and it's easy for me to just throw grenades on that because that's obviously what a lot of non-michigan fans but i'm trying to speak from a michigan fans perspective and tell me if i'm wrong because i know you favor the maize and the blue mm -hmm. i still think 10 and 2 with a win over Ohio State and a close loss at Penn State. That was the game that, that killed your season. Wisconsin right. didn't kill your season. That was embarrassing. Yeah, but look, teams lose games. Michigan State went to the college football playoff, losing on the road to a bad Nebraska team, and still went to the college football playoff. So the Penn State loss is really the one you have to point your finger at, especially if they beat Ohio State. It is. No, and, and that could totally have changed the season. You want to talk about Ronnie Bell dropping the ball in the end zone, right. that, that whole charade that, that happened. Right. But, no, that's, that's definitely going to be the game you point to. I just think, though, that when you look at the goals for Michigan, right, first and foremost, beat your rivals, win the Big Ten, right? Then we can talk about, about right. college football right. playoff and whatever. That's something that's not even on the radar for Michigan no. right now with, over the years. But, I mean, Justin, if, if I would have told you the, the day that Harbaugh was introduced as head coach for Michigan, that through five years that he'd be 0-5 against Ohio State if they lose this week, and already spoken, he's not going to the Big Ten championship game in five years. In five years, if I told well, you that Michigan would not have one trip to Indianapolis to play for the Big Ten title, you would have laughed at me. You would have. I mean, the media, the way that the circus was with everyone saying that the savior is here and how he's going to just put college football on its head, yep. you would have thought they would have three national titles by now with the, the, the hype train. And that's my biggest problem with Michigan as a whole is the hype coming into this year was unfair for this team. I didn't think this team was as good as they everyone thought they should be to win a national title. Let's keep it focused mm -hmm. on this next game, though, because I really think that this from the opposite side, Ohio State as a nine-and-a-half-point favorite could come in here and win this game by 20 25 yeah. points, and then what happens to the narrative there? I, th I think what happens to the narrative, if that happens, which I agree, I could see Ohio State certainly covering the number 25. Sure, I, get, I could see that. They could you know, pile it up like they did last year. my score prediction quite yet, but I get your point. It's If that happens, I think it'd be very, very tough for any Michigan fan to say this season was a success, to say I have the utmost confidence in Harbaugh. Um, now, I, I do think that the, the bad taste in people's mouth has kind of been cleansed a little bit as this season's gone on. 
the blowing out Notre Dame. You know what? Believe it or not, I think that when Michigan blew out Notre Dame, that got a lot of people off off the back. It cooled a lot of that the heat. were cri- critical, whether that's right or wrong. But I still think if they lose to Ohio State, three losses, haven't beat Ohio State in five years, once again not going to the Big Ten title mm-hmm. as we mentioned. I don't know how you could sit here, anyone, and say, well, it was still a successful season. I don't. I know you're going to say it later on the radio this week. I'm not going to steal your thunder here a week out, but do you like Michigan's chances in this game? No, um, I don't. I, I think that if I were to bet right now on the number, I would bet Ohio State to cover. And that's, it's again, I've said on, the, on, our, on this show just now, minutes ago, that Michigan has been getting better, and they've been playing good football. I think Michigan's been playing good football. But, all, but Ohio State, man, I think they're just on a whole different level. I think talent-wise, uh, obviously I assume the Justin Fields injury isn't anything too serious. Sure. Uh, but I think Ohio State is just a different level talent-wise than Michigan. And in big games, Michigan has not been the greatest. So I, I would certainly favor Ohio State in this one um, Shea Patterson is not going to have the time to throw the football that he's had the past three weeks with Chase Young and company. Yeah. Bringing oh, they're, the they're incredible down there yep. so all right hey i want you to give a quick plug because you guys have been making some people some money on the cash the ticket yeah, so give, oh, throw you, a little yeah. plug out there for yeah, that. Absolutely. yeah so we, we do our cash the ticket podcast release every thursday uh radio.com itunes wherever you get your podcasts uh it's lunchtime thursday it's released so we record that early thursday morning get okay. all the all the picks in um gotta see how the picks are doing this week I, i'd have a general idea but i was nine and oh last week I, it was unreal Look at so, this guy. It, it was. I mean, I'll never be nine and zero again. But no, I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. We we put a lot of research. Uh, myself and, and Mike Valeni put a lot of research into it. We try to do a good job. So well, good stuff, man. Thanks for coming in. Thank coming you. up after the break, though. Last week we had a couple of guys on this couch: Isaiah Hole from WolverinesWire.com and John U. Bacon, of course, the famed New York Times bestseller and Michigan historian. Their take on the game coming up right after this break. Welcome back to the 7 Sports Cave. I got some bad news for you guys. Between the Lions, the Pistons, and the Red Wings, our three professional teams have a combined 15 wins so far in their seasons total. Yeah, I was told there was no math, but thank goodness for our college teams, Michigan and Ohio State, of course. They should give us a pretty good game this weekend, especially with how both teams have been playing as of late. Now, last week when they were on the show, I asked two Michigan media members what it would mean for the Wolverines to steal a win this weekend. Does a win over Ohio State do anything to help? I mean, obviously it's something that Harbaugh needs and Michigan needs, but the season in all pretty much estimation is, is kind of lost as far as the championship goals. Where do you guys sit on that? I think it would do, beating Ohio State would do more, even in a 9-2 in a and two season, would do more for Michigan, for Harbaugh, than winning the Big Ten title without it. I wow. think this okay. year you've knocked off Notre Dame, Michigan State, and Ohio State. You're right. He's not gotten to the, not won the division, not gone to the, um, tied to last year, I guess, but uh, not gone to the uh, game in Indianapolis. But beating the Buckeyes is so big. They've done it once this, you know, in forever, twice this century. Mm-hmm. And this century, by the way, is 2019, just yeah. in case you're watching at home. I think that would do almost everything Jim needed. I mean, I agree, especially with it being Ryan Day's first year. I, I'm on the record for saying that I think Ohio State's the best team in the country right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I would totally agree with that. I mean, they're complete. They're, there's nothing I've that they're I've seen no bad. flaws. I've seen no flaws. And so to be able to do that to, you know, to that team right now, if they go out and look like they've been looking, if they make Penn State look like they made Wisconsin look, then, I mean, what, what, what it does for Michigan recruiting, what it does for, for the narrative, it would, it would take Ohio State and drop them down several tiers. So it does just as much for Michigan as much as it would damage Ohio State when right, right now they're flying so high. Right. Uh, right. All these five stars want to go there. It completely changes the narrative. So, yeah, I think that's it would be there absolutely There are some crucial. parallels at 69. If you want to go 50 years back, Michigan grinding the gears, lost to Michigan State that year. They were 3-2 and two at five games. Ohio State hadn't lost in a year and a half. But by the time they got there, they were knocking them out, Michigan was. Um, and... So I think they not only have to beat Indiana, they've got to smoke them to have enough momentum to actually take on a team like Ohio State. Mm -hmm. I watched that that Michigan State-Ohio State game from the sideline 
for four quarters. Those are big boys. And that is a team like no. I mean, that's what Alabama fans go. Yeah, that's our team almost every year. I think you're right. And this is probably the best Ohio State team they've had. Probably better than the national championship team they had oh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And no they question. get Chase Young back, and it seems like Justin Fields is doing his yeah. thing, and J.K. Dobbins is just another machine. It would be a monstrosity win, and I think you're right. The perception is everything right now because, guys, it was not too long ago, was it? Three, four, five weeks ago where there were still people going, Harbaugh should be out. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Wisconsin game was the, was the low know? point for sure. It's, um, it's crazy. That, that's when Paul Feinbaum gives you a call, by the way. Paul. Good old Paul. I like Paul. I wish we could take callers here. Where's Phyllis? We need Phyllis from like <laughs> down river somewhere to call us up. Phyllis, call us up. Keep in mind, I know Michigan fans do not like Paul, but I understand that. Michigan too. ain't played nobody bacon. That's what she would say. <laughs> Special thanks to those two guys for coming in last week. And it's so true. Michigan could really, really, really use this momentum going into the offseason. Whatever bowl game, you know, they go play and that's whatever. Beating Ohio State certainly would set a tone that Harbaugh, even in year five, is still on the right track with this program. I don't think a loss necessarily derails that, but it certainly doesn't support the fact that Harbaugh's still doing his thing down in Ann Arbor. All right, over in East Lansing, it's another different story. Michigan State. Look, they got to get a win against Maryland, a 3-8 and eight Maryland team who won Nebraska reporter said they just look like they're done, like they're just defeated. They don't want to play anymore. So if Michigan State can't rally the troops to get a win at home on senior day for this senior class, Joe Bocci, of course, he'll be honored. He won't play. Brian Lewerke, Kenny Willekes, Raquan Williams up front. There's just too many seniors on this team for them to have a lackluster effort, especially knowing that those 15 bowl practices and a bowl game, whether it's in the quick lane bowl or what producer Mike Fawson, I believe, will be in the pinstripe bowl over in New York. They got to get it done. We'll see if they can get it done. Mark D'Antonio, this would obviously continue his legacy of only missing one bowl game in his time at Michigan State during that three and nine season. And I even believe this season is a little bit worse than that season after everything all played out. We'll see. That game gets kicked off at 3.30 on Saturday. All right, coming up next, high school football finals. We got them at Ford Field. We'll tell you who's in it from our area coming up after the break. Welcome back to thefamilydeal.com. Seven Sports Cave. In case you missed it over the weekend, six area teams have qualified for the high school football state finals at Ford Field this Friday and Saturday. Here they are. Saturday, 1 o'clock, Division I, Davison versus Brighton, who upset a good team from down a river. Detroit King in Division II versus Muskegon Mona Shores. That's Friday at 1 o'clock. Division Three, River Rouge. That's a great story. They take on Muskegon Saturday, the nightcap. Division Four, Detroit Country Day versus Grand Rapids Catholic Central. Division Five, Almont versus Lansing Catholic. That's Saturday at 4.30. And then in Division Six, Monroe St. Mary's Catholic Central versus Maple City Glen Lake Friday at Ford Field. If you have a chance to get down to Ford Field to watch these games, go and do it. These kids have worked so long and so hard for this opportunity. Good luck to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving.